What's up, guys? Welcome to AJ Klein Ministries. My name is Aaron Klein. Still reading through Desiring God. It has been a slow read. Uh, some things have happened. I have pulled away from this book and read two other books. Coming back to this book in between. Now I am in the marriage chapter. And if any of you know, I love to talk about marriage. Uh, marriage is very important to me. The way that I love my wife and treat my wife and put that on display for the world is uh, important. But I'm reading through this book and this section got me, it made me think. So we're looking in Genesis verse 21. Hold up, let me back up. Let me tell y'all something I shared today while I was speaking. And then I'm gonna relate that to this message. When I was 17, I was a heathen, wasn't living for God, didn't know God, the womanizer, sleeping with girls, alcoholic. Every day at school, there was this one girl that would walk by me. And I would see this one girl and I would think to myself, wow, this beautifully angelic person. I didn't look at her the same way I did other girls. I didn't even, I was afraid to approach her because of this. And now that I look back on it, I think to myself, if looking at the way I was, why didn't I talk to her? Why didn't I say something to her? Why didn't I try to sleep with her? I was scared. God would not allow me to speak to that girl because that girl was his child. That girl was his daughter. That girl demanded a different kind of love. Fast forward. Many years, I, I went through the Marine Corps. I, I went through a 13 year failed marriage that two people sinning against each other, talking to other people, you know, doing whatever, nothing holy, nothing sacred. And now I find myself today living for God, studying his word, preaching the gospel, married to the girl that used to walk by at school that I was afraid to talk to then. See, God knew that I was a heathen then. God knew that I couldn't treat her right then. I had to go through some things. And I went through some things. And then I landed where God wanted me, in the position that God wanted me. And God changed my heart. When God changed my heart, he gave me Jennifer, my beautifully obedient wife, as a gift. A gift that I'm completely undeserving of. But he gave her to me. So I'm reading this book and it says, uh, in Genesis, according to verse 21 and 22, the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon man. And while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then once presented, Adam says, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. You know, I read this the other day and I was thinking to myself, how important marriage is. Not only that, how important is the pursuit of marriage? 
How important is the pursuit of your rib? Man, I went through that 13 year marriage, not married to my rib. See, I wasn't saved. I wasn't a man of God. I wasn't seeking the will of God. I was doing everything for my own pleasure. And in doing my own pleasure, I made my own choices and my own choices were leading me down a dark path. I made many, many mistakes. I wasn't searching for my rib. I had saw my rib, but I wasn't living accordingly enough for God to give me my rib. I know that sounds funny, but this is important. See, when God saw Adam and said it's not good for him to be alone, he took his rib, Adam's rib, and made Eve his wife. He didn't take a rib from Adam and make a wife for somebody else down the line. See, my rib didn't make a wife for William up the street or Bob down the road, and their ribs didn't make wives for anybody else. See, that's the problem in the world. We live our life trying to make our own decisions and not seeking the will of God. So I went through that period of time, living however I wanted to live, marrying who I thought that I needed to marry. And I did all of these things and my life was in shambles. My life was a wreck. And then I started to live for Christ and I married the most beautiful bride that a man could marry. And I truly feel that Jennifer is my bride that was made for my rib. And the reason why I say that is things seem to be more fluid. I guess you would say, I guess the word that I want to use is, is blissful. I'm not saying that we haven't had, you know, a trial here and there or a disagreement. You know, I, I think every human does, but it's how we approach those disagreements with respect, with honor for each other, knowing that we were made for each other to give honor to each other, to give honor and glory to God, you approach marriage a little bit differently. So knowing those things, if man would go into the pursuit of marriage, seeking his ribs, seeking the one that God made for him, things would be a lot different. So I had this thought that until man seeks his rib, his marriage will be in shambles. His, his marriage will not be the way God intended it to be. His relationships will not be the way God intended them to be. And that all falls on my next statement. Until man seeks the will of God, his life will be in shambles. It's just my thoughts on this little segment of this book. It really, it really hit me hard when I look back and I think about our marriage and the life that I went through and everything leading up to where I'm at today. God's orchestrated plan to destroy me so that I would be, be better equipped to treat his daughter with the love and respect that she demanded to destroy me so that I would be even more thankful for my salvation and the gifts and the blessings and the grace that he has bestowed upon me. So men, are you seeking your rib? That's the question. Repent, transform, praise and worship. God bless you.